What's up? So, um, I, uh, I don't know. Um, like, I said I was going to make a new channel, but I'm not. I'm just going to stick to this one because I already have like 500 some videos on this. But here is a battle that I just had versus the Gumi, and it was really good. Let's get into this. And let me pause this after first turn. So, um, I saw the Servine. I didn't think he would lead with that. I was thinking about leading off of the Vile Plume, but. He has the uh, Zatu to bounce back the sleep and really have a type advantage over me in both ways, flying and psychic. And he also has the Servine, um, which actually I'm not very scared of with Vile Plume, but I can't put it to sleep and he can switch in, maybe have HP Fire, or maybe be Specs, I don't really know. So I was just thinking uh, lead off with Frog, he's probably going to lead off with Crustle. And with Crustle, even if they don't have Zatu, I always just try to Scald just so that I can kill it before it can, or not kill it even, just get the damage so... He has less opportunity to get up the hazard scald normally to it KOs. And um, yeah, so that was my first turn thought. He actually switches into Zatu thinking I'm going to try and set up the rocks. But in fact, I get go for the scald. And um, unfortunately for him, I get the burn, but that's why you use scald to get the burn. And um, I'm like, okay, a lot of these carry Giga Train. There's no reason for me to stay in at all. I'm just going to switch to Masharna, take any hit and be able to baton pass out. If he has Shadow Ball, I'm not really that worried. Uh, they normally don't run that much special attack, as you can see, that does nothing. But with that, with that, I thought he had leftovers, and I'll, I'll explain why I'm pointing that out. So he gets the burn damage, which is actually racking up, which kind of sucks. And he goes for the T-Wave, um, which is an interesting play, I think. Um, I would have switched out if I were him, but I guess he thought I could set up or something. I don't really know what he was thinking there, but... I'm paralyzed, so maybe I'll get paralyzed or whatever. So here, ah, oh no, he's burned. So I'm thinking like he really wants a Zatu. Um, I thought he was leftovers too. If I didn't see the leftovers, I probably wouldn't have made this play. Or if I didn't think he had leftovers, I wouldn't have made this play. But so what I do go for this is a pursuit, knowing that he wants to keep his Zatu, and he'll probably just switch to Mawile, which is an easy, easy switch. So um, or like yeah, no, Mawile is probably the best switch. So I pursuit. Even with the cold bear, bear he's uh, get he gets taken out because he was switching out, and he is gonna probably go into the Mawile. No, he goes into Crustle. That's right. I don't remember. Um, I guess because it definitely threatens me out with Excess. Or yeah, that's actually probably a better play since he doesn't have any hazards yet. And uh, I'm just gonna U-turn out, scared of the Excess, which um, I probably should be. And I go into my Seismitoad, I'm sure. Um, and I'm gonna go. Um, he gets up his spikes, not the rocks, actually, which uh, confused me. I guess it hits everything, and it'll hit Seismitoad harder and whatnot, but I don't really know. I don't really know the spikes damage as well as I said. He switches out, and I am going to go for the Scald, like I said. Um, I think it's more important than, because he could he could have just stayed in and set up all over my face. Now he's in with Servine. I'm like, I have Vile Plume. There's no way he's going to go for the Leaf Storm. Most of these are choiced anyways. He's not going to go for a grass move. I don't want to stay in with Seismitoad, though. That's just balls to the walls and not necessary. All I could do is get up rocks, and I could do that any point in the match. Uh, the only thing it's going to hit, really, is um, Crustle. <clears throat> so what I do is go into Masharna, and he end up ends up going for the Glare, and I'm already paralyzed. So I guess he was predicting a Vile Plume to come in, which is probably what most people would have done. So that was a good play and a safe play at that. But, um... I'm going to baton pass out on the switch, I believe. No, no, I might go for the psychic. I don't really know. I'm talking right here. No, I probably do baton pass and go into something else. Oh, no, I straight... Oh, that's right. Because I didn't know if he was choice yet, so I straight switched into plumes. And uh, if he was choice, he's probably going to switch out. But if he wasn't, he would have gone for the leaf storm. So that was... Um, I think it was a safer play than going for the baton pass because I didn't know what he was yet. I actually don't think um figured out most of the game, but I just put him to sleep because I know he's not going to switch into Servine because uh, I definitely have the type advantage, and um, I'm going to switch out into Frog, and he is going to switch out, I for <laughs> I don't remember, I just played this like 10 minutes ago and I don't remember, but he goes into Sock, and so now I'm like, okay, I'm just going to stay and go for the Rocks, he'll I, I didn't want to switch into Masharna or Vile Plume. I thought it was too obvious he could just go for the knockoff. I thought he was going to go for the knockoff, to be honest. But he calls my bluff. Watch this. He actually really outplayed me on this turn. That, I think this was one of the biggest turns in the game right here, where he sticks the close combat. I could have easily gone into Masharna, easily gone into Vile Plume. But he sticks the close combat, predicting me to stay in. 
that really impressed me. That I, that threw me off a bunch. I don't know. Um, I probably should have switched into Bioplume or even Masharna, but I didn't. I wanted my rocks, and uh, now um, I was sure he was banned. I did the calcs. He couldn't kill me without banned. So um, I go into Masharna, and I believe I just go for the Psychic. Now that his Mawile, the only thing that can resist it is Asleep. And he goes into Crustle, which... Um, which is another interesting play. He's not a really interesting smart. He's just trying to get the hazards up and uh, sack Crustle, it seems. And as long as I don't get paralyzed, which is something you can't really count on, I'm going to be able to take him out while he's able to get up two more hazards of his choice. So um, I go for the Psychic, and he is going to just go for the Excess, I believe, get some damage off, actually some nice damage off, about half health. And I'm going to take him out with the Psychic. Fortunately, I do not get paralyzed. And, uh, yeah, so that was good for me. Um, it's sitting at 5v4 right now in my favor. And I'm at 50 health with Hugs. And I'm at basically full health with everything else, I believe. So he brings in Sock. I'm just... I, I actually thought a lot on this turn. I did a bunch of Calyx versus Vileplume knowing that he was banded. I was like, okay, Knockoff can... Uh, I don't think it can 2-it KO me, but... Um, I really just don't want to risk him going for the Fire Punch or Ice Punch, as he already predicted me. And um, looking at the rest of his team, other than Sock, Masharna is not going to be doing much, and they carry Knockoff. So I was thinking just foddering my Masharna right here and getting the Switch in um, initiative, as my team does love that. So he revenges me right after I said it was 5-4. Now it's 4-4, so he's keeping it even. I go into my Angus Can, and... Uh, I knew that I could just fake out. I was actually thinking for a long time that what if he was inner focus? That would really suck, but I, I convinced myself that he couldn't be inner focus. So I'm just going to go for the fake out on this turn, and he goes into Mawile. Um, yeah, that's a standard play. And he gets the Intimidate off on me. I'm just going to stay in and go for the Earthquake. Um, I think, yeah, yeah, probably. There's no reason for me to switch out. This is the only, best thing to take on my while right now. And even though I'm at uh, minus one attack, that still does a bunch. He gets a bit, he wakes up and gets up his rocks, which is very fortunate for him. So I think that was first turn wake. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go for the Earthquake again. Not really scared of him switching out into anything. He goes into Servine, and I'm like, okay. I'm pretty sure he doesn't have a fire move because... Um, he went for the glare last time I went into Bioplume. I don't really care about the glare that much because he's already slower than everything on his team besides Mawile. And, uh, I mean, for, yeah, slower than everything. So he goes for the glare, paralyzes me, and now I'm like, okay, I think he's choice because of how he's playing. So I know he's not going to stay in here either way. I could just take him out, and I could go for the sludge bomb. So he's going to switch out in my mind. I'm just going to go for the sleep powder. And uh, he does end up switching out, and he goes into Mawile, and I give it a sleep, so that's really good for me. It gives me a free opportunity to go into Kangaskhan because he can't wake up on this turn, and um, if he switches out, I can just fake out anything and probably take out anything in a one-on-one -on -one right now. But the spikes are really stacking up, so I'm limited switches right now, and they're really racking up damage on me, which I, was something I didn't like. Um, I'm not really scared of the Servine coming in. Again, I can just go into uh, Vileplume. So I'm just going to go for the Earthquake, and he is going to stay in and die. So now it's 4-3. to three. He um, has this core right here. Um, I don't remember what he goes into right now. He goes into Sock. So now I'm thinking that he's Sturdy Sock for sure. And I didn't want to double edge. I'm not, I don't remember how much it does. I think it does about 90 to Sock. Um... I don't remember. I, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to fodder Liepard because looking at it, um, this guy's probably Scarfed. It can hit Sock, but, I mean, not that hard. It can hit Lantern, but not that hard, but, um, well, probably pretty hard to Lantern. But I just, I I like to um, fodder Liepard before I fodder any of these two guys, and Bioplume can definitely do well against the three things left on his team, so that was my thought process. I actually realized that Vileplume was good versus his team early in the game, right after I took out the uh, Azatu. Um, Vileplume, um, even though it couldn't do anything to Mawile or uh, Crustle, yeah, it could hurt Crustle, but it basically was really good versus the five remainders of his team. So I, I tried uh, harder to keep Vileplume alive than I did the other two guys. And uh, I bring in Persian now. I'm just going to go for the fake out, don't want to risk anything, and um, he goes into Lantern, I believe. So, 
No, he goes into Servine actually. <laughs> That's right. So I go for the fake out, and I'm I'm don't want to risk him being scarfed. Um, so I just go for the faint. I was pr um, considering going into Vileplume, but it just wasn't worth it. I was like, why would I go into Vileplume when I could take this guy out right here, right now? That's what I want to do instead. He goes in a Lantern. I'm just going to... Oh, actually, let me pause this. Ah, hit my lamp when I was trying to pause that. <laughs> um, I'm going to... I was thinking on this turn. So I have Vileplume, and I have Kangaskhan, and I have to switch into one of the two. And... Let me think of how I thought about this. So, oh, I calced it, and I knew that even if he was modest, max attack, max special attack, Vileplume can live one Ice Beam, and um, Kangaskhan is... It, I, I was thinking that he was running Jolly Sock, and even if he wasn't, I don't know. I just felt like Persian could do the job, and let's see. So I, I decided to go into Kangaskhan, because I'm just going to fodder and then go into Vileplume where I can live one and be able to Giga Drain or Synthesis. Or, or actually, I was thinking probably put it to sleep. So that's what I do. Get a crit on the U-turn. It doesn't really matter at all. But um, I go into my Kangaskhan. And he actually goes for the Thunder Wave, which is pretty surprising to me. And um, I go for the Fake Out. And I'm going to hit through it. And luckily hit through it at that. But then on this next turn, I know the Sucker Punch is obvious, but the thing is, I didn't want to risk him being able to get a free switch into Sock, and then having to go for Sucker Punch, and, um, I don't know. If I had gone, oh wait, I think I, no, 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 that's right, I hit Cancel, but it's, <laughs> okay, so I did uh, end up going for Sucker Punch, but if he had switched in his Sock right there, that would have been bad. I, I canceled Sucker Punch, like, five minutes ago, but... It still went through, and oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I make, my gosh, I make the wrong. I should definitely go into Vile Plume, right? But I fail to make that decision. Um, if he's faster than me, I could just put him to sleep and take him out. If he goes into sock, I can put him to sleep and recover. So I should have just gone into Vile Plume, but my thought process was going to Kanga or not Kanga Scan Persian, fake out double edge, switch into Vile Plume, and then fodder it, and then kill sock. But let's see how that plays out for me. So I'm going to be able to go for the um, fake out. And then at this point, I was realizing, like, oh, my God. This double-edge recoil is going to make it so I can't switch back in. So I go for the double-edge. <laughs> and I even asked in chat, because I was like, I don't know how much two layers of spikes in a rocks does. And I typed in chat, how much does two layers of spikes do to a normal type? Someone said 30%. So they're like, dang it, I got to sack my Persian right here. And I'm going to go for the double edge and get a bunch of damage. And he's going to lock himself into Zen Headbutt <laughs> and hit me. So it all came down to if he missed. And even if that, he won the game because of how I played endgame. So I could have easily won that game. It was well played by both of us, I think. I don't think either of us made many mistakes besides him switching into the Zatu immediately and then me not switching into vile plume so i just gotta pay more attention end game take it slower take my time but that was a good game versus gumi and um he won that that was a very narrow close game it came down to how we both played it in the end and i'm not sure if i would have been able to want win either way i think it would have been really close and down to the last plays but that was an enjoyable match uh, i'm glad that i'm getting all these matches that are pretty good so you can tell me how you like this kind of narration and, um, yeah, good game, Gumi. Goodbye.